In this video, I will discuss the QEEG profile reports. I will go through the results of an example QEEG profile report page by page and explain how to look at the graphs and pictures. The cover page has the option to enter the name of the patient. When you save the report after a name is entered, the name will be saved as well. Additionally, the date of the recording, the age, gender, and handedness of the patient is depicted here as well. The introduction page starts with an introductory text about the different analysis in the report and will give you general information about the patient's symptoms and the EEG recording. The patient's symptoms can be based on the client questionnaire that has been filled out by the client uh, or a relative of the client or it can be based on the therapist's rating scale, which has been filled out by the therapist. For the EEG recording, you can read about what type of EEG amplifier was used, as well as the sampling frequency and the recording duration for both the eyes opened and eyes closed condition. At the bottom of the page, a sample of the raw EEG of the patient is depicted to give a general impression of what the EEG looked like. The next page starts with a general introductory text about what to expect from this report. Below the introduction you can see the five classic frequency bands. Delta, Theta, Alpha, SMR and Beta. Let's start with Delta. The first sentence will tell you whether Delta was normal, deviantly high or deviantly low and on what location this deviance was found. Then you'll get a general explanation on the function of delta activity in the brain and which disorders are generally associated with deviances in delta activity. For theta, you'll again see whether theta activity is normal or abnormally high or low, followed by an explanatory text about which disorders are associated with deviances in theta. For alpha, you'll get a little bit more uh, information. Uh, since it takes both the alpha activity during eyes open and eyes closed conditions into account. The so-called alpha arrest reaction reflects the difference in alpha between the eyes open and the eyes closed conditions and is indicative of the arousal or vigilance level of the patient. The alpha peak frequency is a feature of alpha activity that is independent of alpha amplitudes and is described separately. Next, SMR, or sensory motor rhythm, is actually a type of beta activity, which is present on the motor cortex and functionally distinct from beta activity in higher frequency ranges or different brain regions. Finally, beta activity is defined here as a frequency band between 15 and 30 Hz and has generally been positively correlated with arousal. The next page contains the so-called EEG biomarker match. This graph will give you information about the relationship between the de degree of pathology as measured with the client questionnaire or therapist rating on the one hand and the deviations in brain activity on the other hand. The questionnaire or rating results are depicted in red and the deviations in brain activity are depicted in green. In this example, the patient shows a 100% score on ADHD for the questionnaire or rating and this matches the brain activity deviations rather well, since the match with ADHD is about 80% for brain activity deviations. The transparency of the green color conveys the scientific support of the EEG biomarkers that have been found for the disorder in question. When the green color is more transparent, the scientific support is relatively low. This is the case for the EEG biomarkers that have been found for anxiety in this example. There is an EEG biomarker match of more than 50%, but the transparency of the green color signals that the scientific support for the EEG biomarkers that have been found is relatively weak, which means that you should interpret this match with caution. The next page shows the EEG biomarker scales, which gives you a bit more detail about what deviations have been found. The top graph shows the pathology scales. 
As you can see, there is theta power, beta power, frontal alpha asymmetry, alpha power, and delta power. Even though there is scientific literature linking deviations in all of these measures to pathology, there is a difference in the amount of scientific support. This is depicted in this graph in two ways. First, the thicker the bar, the more scientific support. And second, the closer the bar to the center of the graph, the more scientific support. So the closer to the center and the thicker the bar, the more scientific support for the relationship between deviations in that measure and pathology in general. Um, this means that deviations in theta power are most relevant for pathology, while deviations in delta power have the least scientific support regarding its relation with pathology. In these examples, there are clear deviations in theta power, frontal alpha asymmetry, alpha power, and delta power. The bottom graph shows the arousal scales. Generally speaking, high arousal is associated with high power in higher frequency bands such as beta and gamma, and lower power in lower frequency bands such as alpha, theta and delta. For low arousal, it's the other way around. Bars below 50% correspond with low arousal, while bars above 50% correspond with high arousal. Here there are clear indications of low arousal since there is a high amount of alpha power, a high amount of theta power, and a high amount of delta power. So you can see that alpha power, theta power, and delta power are inversely related with arousal. So the higher the alpha, the lower the arousal, and the higher the theta, the lower the arousal, and again, the higher the delta power, the lower the arousal. So in this, this case, it's a clear example of low arousal. The analyses that have been discussed so far are all based on surface EEG. Surface EEG is still most often reported in scientific publications that investigate the link between psychological disorders and deviations in brain activity as measured with EEG. However, source-level EEG analysis based on techniques such as Loretta can be used to get precise anatomical locations of brain activity abnormalities. Using source level analysis, we can use knowledge gained from scientific studies that have used other techniques that have high spatial resolutions, such as fMRI. The QEEG profile report shows deviations in brain activity for brain networks that have shown to be functionally distinct in resting state EEGs. The first network that is depicted is called the default mode network. It consists of frontal and parietal areas, as well as the posterior cingulate area. In the top half of the page, you will see that areas in the default mode network have deviantly high or low activity, show normal activity, or a mix of high and low activity. Studies in which EEG and fMRI are used simultaneously have shown that high brain activity, as measured with fMRI, is associated with high power in high frequencies and low power in low frequencies when looking at the EEG signal. The ratio between high and low frequency power is used here to determine whether a brain area is hyperactive or hypoactive or shows a mix of both hyperactivity and hypoactivity, for example when there is both high power in high frequencies and high power in low frequencies. Um, the horizontal bars show the percentage of brain activity that show hyperactivity and the percentage of brain areas that show hypoactivity. In the bottom left part of the page, the network connectivity is shown. Network connectivity is based on uh, the level of phase coherence between different brain areas. Hyperconnectivity is shown in purple, while hypoconnectivity is shown in blue. The horizontal bars show the percentage of connections that are hyper or hypo-connected. In the bottom right part of the page, you'll find the arousal and pathology indicators. These indicators show whether the deviations in the network signal high, low or normal arousal, 
and normal, elevated or high risk of pathology. The next pages all show the exact same measures for the different resting state networks that have shown to be functionally distinct during resting state EEG recordings. Um, the current page shows the dorsal attention network, which is followed by the emotion regulation cortex, um, and then the sensory motor cortex is discussed, the memory network uh, consisting of the left and right hippocampal areas, and finally the visual cortex is evaluated. In order to get the most out of these reports, it is not only advised to read through the text carefully to understand what is shown, but in order to get a complete understanding of the brain activity profile of your patient, you should look at all the different analysis, analysis that QEG Pro offers, such as the SARA reports, the surface analysis for the different montages, and the S. Loretta analysis. Thank you for watching.